G'day. Today's main project has been making up uh, a worm or some worms to fit uh, these worm wheels. Uh, worms are basically a, a funny thread um, because you're talking about the circular pitch of a gear and these are integer numbers here, pi creeps in and so it's not a nice smooth ratio. The, the, the one that I'm making at the moment is something like 7.6 or 7.8 I think TPI. It's not a not a a sensible ratio. It fits, which is the main thing. But I had a devil of a job trying to convert these into that worm. Um, I'm on the home stretch now, I've got everything sorted I think, but um, this was a problem. And the, and, the, and the major problem was, if you can just see, there's a 1 16th of an inch wide keyway. That's uh, a little bit over one and a half millimeters for, for metric folks. I have a 1 16th brooch, but I had to position that brooch. I didn't have a 1 16th or a, a bush suitable for that size bore. So I had, to, I had to make one or I was going to make one. And this is where the trouble came in. If you look carefully at that, you may see that that's not quite symmetric. This side is a little thinner than this side. It's not by much. It's only 0.2, 0.3 of a millimeter. It's amazing how much the eye can pick up, but more importantly, if I put, tried to put that into the bore of a, a gear, um, you probably have all sorts of trouble fitting the, the keyway. So that was out. So I made up a bit of tooling to help me do that, uh, which was quite successful. And so this clip is, I'll, I'll be talking about the um, making the worms in another clip, but this clip is basically running through the design process that I do to, to come up with these jigs and you might find it interesting. You might also find that uh, you want to make one of these things too when you see what it does and, and, and how it'll actually make things a little bit easier. The better way to cut that slot would have been with a slitting saw, something like this. But the problem I have is that with the vertical head in there, the tools I've got to hold my slitting saw are either this one or this one. And so I have all sorts of strife getting a slitting saw in and getting a nice end without having this thing sticking out too far in the vise to achieve the end result. So what I'm going to be doing is, is trying to work out a better way to hold a piece of, of round stock, um, you know, this sort of stuff, so that I can come in with my arbors and cut without running into vices and all that sort of thing and with also without if I have it in a in a vice without hitting the, the the head of the mill. The first thing you need to do is properly define the problem. Uh, it's nice to be able to say I want to hold that there and put a slit in it but that doesn't necessarily help you very much. We want to think about what size material we we want to hold in this particular case. Okay. Um, I was saying earlier about you know current vices and things not not clearing the the, the head. This is a, a about a 70 mil slitting saw. It's pretty typical. By the way, the machine is off. Um, but you can see that this being my smallest vice, I can't get in there. It's not it's not uh, you know not even close. So anything I have can't stick up more than about that much. Okay. On the other hand. It'd be nice to have this as low as I can, but I, I could have, if, if I could turn that around and mount that like that, okay, I might be onto something, all right? The downside, of course, is I've got, I've got this thing floating in the breeze, and so rigidity has, has uh, diminished. Okay, how are we gonna hold this thing? Um, so I've got T-slots on my mill, so one of the obvious things is I need something that will fasten down to T-slots. Now whether I put some lugs on that or whether I just have some spots where uh, existing strap clamps can go in, uh, don't know, open mind at the moment. But that sort of really defines what we're trying to do. We want something that will hold a piece of bar stock up to about 20 millimeters in diameter, such that I can, I can get in there and take a decent depth of cut without running into you know, the, the, um, the milling head. I don't want it to be too tall because I, I won't have rigidity, so I'll have chatter and all that sort of thing there. That pretty much sums up the, the, the functional requirement. So if you ask me right now what do my design thoughts look like, 
I would say I want a block that I can fasten down so I'm probably going to have a, a foot like that and one on the other side that I can use to fasten the thing down. Obviously it needs a top and that distance between there and there is, is I want to make that a, a minimum but because of that the, the cutter holder I've got I probably that has to in, in reality that has to probably be 50 millimeters roundabout okay width up here um, probably about 60 millimeters fore aft don't particularly care but I need to have something that is going to be wide enough to bridge my t-slots and preferably the wider the better because that then gives me some stability when it's bolted down to the mill so that's that's basically what we're thinking now when I first started hanging out with it with mechanical designers um, one of them gave me an exercise that he said design me a, uh, a hinge mechanism okay I went away scratched my head for a couple of hours came back up oh, this is this is great you'll love this and I showed to him, yep, that's pretty good, he says. Design me, an, or, you know, come up with another nine. I said, what do you mean, another nine? He said, well, you don't expect the first one you do to be perfect. And he was actually right. It was actually number six that was the most practical. Now, these days I do that sort of thing in my head, but I still will sit down with some butcher's paper occasionally and, and, and do it on paper if it's a particularly novel sort of problem where I need to sort of put lots of detail in. But... This part of the, the approach is we're not pinning ourselves down to anything at the moment. We're just coming up with some, some bits and pieces. But what I do need to be able to do is clamp that down. And this is where a lot of um, thought is, is needed. Okay. One option might be if I put, say, a piece of angle iron here. And I could put a pivot on that of some sort, anchor that to there, and I could put a bolt like that and I could use that to, to clamp that down that's not a bad idea but that means that I've always got to have pretty much the same size stock I can't I can't do much else okay on a mill um, you've got your hold down straps you've got a, a strap you've got a, a, a bolt And then you've got some form of support here that holds it. So I could do something like that. We saw the little vise. And we said, well, you know, if we use that upside down, that might help. So I could possibly do something like that, maybe make up an angle plate for the back of that. Um, when, you, when you're working for yourself, you can just say, hey, I like the look of that one or that one, whatever. Okay, but at the moment, as I said, we're, we're trying to keep our, our, our minds open. We're trying to just think about what sort of concepts can we have here to, to clamp that down. So now I need to think about the practicalities of this. So I want to keep that 20 to 22 millimeters because that means my, my standard hold down bolt that I use for my vise and other accessories, I can use that there. That's going to di dictate the, the geometry of the slots. What I would also like to be able to do is put this across the table. So I started out thinking I wanted along the T-slots, but if I have that spacing right, in my case four and a half inches, I can put it across the T-slots as well, which may come in handy for making it, but also may come in handy um, for doing odd things where I may not have the space or it's it's a funny shape and, and across the table is the only way it's going to go and all that sort of thing, okay? Um, this could be, could be a problem. I need to have a look at that. Uh, it might be that I have to put a, a notch in here um, so I can get that clamp in closer or I may have to work out some way of putting a... Um, some sort of prop or clamp or something in there um, so that 
I've got something for this this uh, T-slot clamp to, to bolt onto. That hole there, and I'll have another one on this side so I can turn this around, uh, needs to be uh, 3 8 Whitworth or 3 8 UNC. UNC, I think my, my clamp kit is. Uh, once again, I've standardized that throughout the, the mill, so that's not a problem. So really it's a matter now of, of looking through and seeing, okay, have I got a piece of material which is, you know, basically, what would that be, 50 by, oh, I don't know, 75, and if that's the width of the T-slots, that probably needs to be something like um, or 140 millimeters, something like that. So I'll have a look for those, see what I can come up with. And then it's a matter of working out, well, okay, how, how, once, once I know what the material I've got is and what the shape of the thing is going to be, and the shape may be dictated by the, by the material, I can go from there. So I've been through my material pile and I've found some bits of stock to make it out of. This is actually some black bar, so I've just gone through and, and cleaned up all the faces, squared it up and all that sort of thing. Um, I guess if, particularly if you're designing something for yourself, it's better to have something that's close to your uh, desired size that you can take a little bit off, rather than having something which is, you've specified a size which is just a little bit too over because that means you've then got to start with the next highest piece up and take that off. Now I wanted around about 40, 42 here. I found a piece of 40. Um, I've cleaned it up and I get 39 out of it and I can adjust my dimensions to suit that. The alternative would have been to start it with a piece of 50 and then take that down to 42. A lot of work to do that. So I guess that's another um, hint, tip, whatever about doing this sort of stuff is that you, you need to be conscious of the material you've got and specify your sizes to suit and if necessary adjust your design to suit. How am I going to join that to there? Um, I could weld that. The trouble with welding is it's going to introduce some distortion. I mean it's pretty thick stuff so the distortion won't be much but I'd probably need to do a bit of a, a, a skim to take that out. And the other thing is because I, I've never done one of these before, um, never made one, it's probably better off to, to, to bolt that on uh, and then worry about uh, maybe putting some dowel pins to lock it up or something like that rather than just weld it because if I weld it I've basically committed I've, I've got a piece of stuff and if I decide uh, a little bit later on that actually you know that does need to be thicker or it does you know it needs an undercut or something like that if I've got that welded on I can't so when you're when you're doing a new design or developing something uh, you need to look for flexibility in your in your um, assembly. I'm now at a stage where apart from putting the the V grooves in the top uh, I'm pretty much done. Instead of putting dowels in, uh, I've recessed the, the socket head cap screws, but instead of putting dowels in, I've basically put a small recess, it's a, it's a little over a millimetre there, to uh, locate that, and that means that won't twist around, but I can remove it easily and, and change it if I need to. Uh, whenever you're doing an assembly like this, it's, it's a good idea to put a couple of identifying marks there. I've just got a couple of little centre pops. Um, so that if, if you take it apart it becomes obvious which way it goes together. Um, if you've got your holes perfectly drilled you're, you don't need to do that but most of us aren't that good and so we, uh, we do that. The, as you can see the hold down kit goes in there um, with, my, with one of my longest clamps I can, I can get that to, to reach, so that's not a problem. I can I can hold that down. I've got two in, two in each side. Once I put the, the V grooves in, I can then use the, the small side or the large side. I guess the other thing to note too with this is that because I've I made a decision to, to make that the same width so I could set it across the, the table, I can tilt my head over and use that to cut my V grooves. And that was one of the reasons that I thought it'd be nice to do that. I mean, if you made it shorter, you, you could just hold it down with some hold down clamps. But, you know, part of the, the good design thing is not just, does it do what I want, which this should do quite nicely, but also, is it set up so it can be made easily, efficiently, and all that sort of thing. So last steps in making my 
what would you call it, standoff V-block. Uh, this one's for small rod stock, this one's going to be uh, a bit larger. Uh, I've trammed it up on that edge so that I've got, if I, if I want to, I can line that up precisely with and, and know that slot is going to be in the right spot. As you can see, I've got the head of the mill kicked over uh, and uh, so I can get the, the Vs. I'm going to have to retram that later, uh, which is the downside. I mentioned that on the, uh, the cutting angles video, but uh, for this particular occasion works well. And as you can see, because I've chosen my um, hold down slot positions carefully, I can put this this way or I can turn it around and put it the other way. This is the finished stand in use. I've set it up backwards. Normally I'd, I'd probably do it the other way, but just for the purposes of showing people. Um, so uh, the rod that's being slit is, is, is clamped down. Uh, I found the center of it with the saw there, top and bottom, and used the DRO function to get the, the middle. And then because this is thinner than the slot I wanted, I then moved it up and down the appropriate amount. Uh, provided your saw is, is firmly attached to your arbor, you can do that because the saw just sort of basically cuts purely in this direction. There's enough um, there's enough clearance, shall we say, that, that it's it's not going to try and cut sideways into the into the part of the thing if you've got it correctly jigged. So now I'm going to be able to take this off, part this off on the lathe, clean it up a little bit with a file, just take a few burrs and things off, and uh, I've got a I've got a brooch bush. Well, I hope this is a bit of interest to people and who knows, one day you may decide that uh, you need one of these too. Thanks for watching.